Thank you. Uh, I am Treasurer Fiona Ma. I am an Asian woman wearing a brown shirt with bright blue reading glasses and my little poodle puppy on my lap. So I am the California State Treasurer. As State Treasurer, I believe ABLE, CalABLE, is an excellent financial tool for Californians with disabilities. CalABLE is a game changer, providing people with disabilities a low cost, tax advantage way to save and invest for a better financial future. And one of the best parts of having a CalABLE account is that you can spend your money on qualified disability expenses at any time without taxes or penalties. We are often asked, what are qualified disabled expenses? To answer this question, we have invited some of our current Cal Able ambassadors to share with you how they are using their accounts. We will also discuss best record keeping practices to track your qualified disability expenses. We hope that this informative web webinar will help you feel more confident using your Cal Able account to achieve a better life experience. Thank you for joining us today and for your continued support of the Cal ABLE program. Now I would like to turn things back over to Cal ABLE manager, Ann Osborne. Thank you, Treasurer. So first we want to uh, talk a little bit about the basics of Cal ABLE. Uh, so how to use your Cal ABLE to improve your health, independence and quality of life. We are going to be discussing our qualified disability expenses. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about the basics. CalABLE is a tax advantage savings and investment program designed to help people with disabilities achieve their financial dreams. ABLE stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience Act. This is part of the federal program that was signed into law in 2014. The money in these accounts can be used for qualified disability related expenses such as education, housing, and transportation, which we are going to cover just a little bit uh, later in the presentation. And with CalABLE, you can save money uh, for these expenses and also um, have investments. So who is eligible for these for CalABLE? First thing is you, your disability must have began before age 26. Um, this is valid until 2016 when that age is going to increase to age 46. So as long as the disability occurred before age 26, you can open a CalABLE account. If you are receiving benefits like SSI or SSDI, you're all, all automatically eligible to open a CalABLE account. Next slide. So if you're not receiving benefits, you can still open a CalABLE account as long as the account is listed on the Social Security Administration list of compassionate allowances or the Blue Book listings. Um, if it is in that on those lists, what you would need is to have a letter from a qualified physician stating that your disability began before age 26. CalABLE does not require you to have this letter, although we recommend you keep this letter uh, in case you uh, are your account is reviewed by uh, the IRS since they are the ones that passed this law in 2014. We are actually part of the IRS tax code 529A. Next slide, please. So how can you contribute to your account? Uh, the first way is you can do a general contribution, which is a, a contribution of $17,000. That is the cap, and that is calendar year, so it would be January through December of this year. Uh, once the account reaches $100,000, if you would like to maintain your SSI benefits, at that point you would not be able to make any additional contributions, otherwise you would become over-resourced. If you're not worried about um, being, a, you know, maintaining your benefits, you can actually contribute up to $529,000 in contributions. The account will continue to earn interest, uh, but as far as the actual contribution, $529,000 is that cap. Uh, 
Um, I will let you know that we do track these contributions to the accounts. And so if you have already made that annual contribution of $17,000, then uh, if somebody tries to make another contribution into your account, that would not be accepted. So we do uh, make sure that you do not exceed those contribution amounts. Next slide, please. Well, another way you can add to your account is what we call able to work. And what this does, it allows people that are working uh, to contribute additional funds. As long as their employer is not contributing to a retirement plan in that calendar year. So what so the amount that you could contribute uh, through working is $13,590. If you were to combine both these earnings, uh, that and the general contribution of $17,000, you could potentially contribute up to $30,000. Next slide. So uh, with the CalABLE, you are able to invest your money. We have a professionally managed portfolio um, that is available through Bestwell State Savings. They are our program administrator. These uh, investments, they do grow tax-free, and it's just another way that you can build wealth through compound earnings. Next slide. These are the current investment portfolio options that we have. If you are new to this webinar, um, or if you've uh, saw some of our webinars in the past, you may see an expansion here. Uh, currently, we have eight different portfolios. We still offer the FDIC insured portfolio, very similar to that passbook savings that you may be familiar with. We've also added an income portfolio here, which is comprised of stocks and money market securities. And then we have an assortment of investment portfolios beginning with conservative all the way down to the growth portfolio and depending on what your level of risk is you can see that these are all made up of different stocks and bonds so you can look at this and you can decide how you would like to invest your money and we have additional information of what these portfolios um, are made of on our website at calable.ca.gov next slide Last thing we want to talk about here are our account fees. Um, what I want to mention is there is an annual account maintenance fee of $30. This um, is, a, is an annual fee that is um, charged every quarter. Uh, so you have $30, and then that would be um, divided over four quarters, which would be about $7. That's an annual maintenance fee. It doesn't matter if you're in FDIC insured or investment, or if you have multiple um, investment opportunities, it's always going to be just that one-time annual fee of $30. Um, if you're just in FDIC insured, there's going to be an additional uh, fee attached to that account maintenance fee. The example here has $3,000 in assets. Um, that state administrative fee would be $38, uh, would be $8.40, a total of $38.40. That would be the annual fee. Again, that would be um, pulled out of your account on a quarterly basis. It's roughly around six nine dollars uh, per quarter you would see that fee being charged if you were in these investment portfolios depending on what uh, portfolio you selected uh, you, you would see some additional fees uh, that underlying fee the program management fee and the state administrative administrative fee totaling between forty two dollars and forty six dollars that would be that annual fee and you know, on a quarterly um, withdrawal would be roughly around $11 per quarter you would see, depending on which portfolio option. Again, this is based on uh, $3,000 in the accounts. If you want a paper statement, that's going to be an additional $10 fee, annual fee. Um, so that would come out as well. You would see that coming out on a quarterly basis. If you want e email um, your statements, you go on to your account and just print them from your computer. There's not going to be any additional fee on that. 
Next slide, please. How do I open an account? Uh, it's very simple. It's an online process. Uh, one thing we like everyone to know is you can only have one ABLE account. Uh, so if you live here in California, you can have your account in California. If you were to move to another state, you could take your ABLE account, your Cal ABLE account to that state. However, if you decide to um, roll over your CalAble account to a new state that you're living in, you would be able to do that. What you would not be able to do is have a CalAble account and a, another ABLE account in a different state. So the participants can only have one ABLE account. The person that owns the account is the beneficiary of the account. So if you're managing the funds, you are in charge of your account. If you are an authorized legal representative opening this account on behalf of somebody else, that person is again in charge, is the beneficiary of those funds. Next slide. Um, and this is our last slide we're going to talk about today as far as the basic presentation. This is how you open the CalAble account. This is our um, home screen, calable.ca.gov. This is where you would go to open an account. And next slide. And this is, and we're going to talk really about Qualified disability expenses, that's what this webinar is going to be focusing on. And with that, I would like to introduce Dante Allen, our executive director. Thank you, Ann. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's, uh, for today's presentation. Um, just to give you a brief um, description of myself, I'm an African-American man. I'm wearing a light blue um, sweater, and I am behind or in front of a darker blue um, background. Um, I also have uh, a a very gray um, beard, bald head. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about qualified disability expenses. And just to give you an idea, um, there are about 300 people on today's webinar, so thank you um, for making this event a success. Um, and I'm seeing lots of questions, and there, and you're asking lots of nuanced questions about what makes up a qualified disability expense. So before I go into my definitions, I, I thought it'd be um, worthwhile to hear what your thoughts and views are. Um, on whether some of these popular items might be considered qualified expenses. Next slide, please. So we're going to do a little quiz. And the first thing I want to know um, as you input to the quiz is, what are you saving for? Um, is it for a first home or an accessible vehicle, education, technology or equipment, service animal perhaps? health and wellness, you can check on the, um, if you're participating online, you can check on one of the multiple choice items um, that appeared in the poll on screen. I'll give you a few um, more uh, moments to be able to fill that out. Okay, so your results, about 35% of you say that you are um, saving for health and wellness. That's something that we hear very commonly. Um, another 30% say that you're saving for your first home, uh, which is fairly common. Uh, a little less common is technology or equipment, about 26% of you, 15% um, for an accessible vehicle, 23% for education. So that's um, great information. Thank you for giving us your thoughts. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is asking you what your thoughts are on qualified disability expenses. So let's ask ourselves, could a monthly bus pass be considered a qualified disability expense? And we'll say likely yes, likely no, or you're not sure. And I do understand we haven't really defined um, with any specificity what qualified disability expenses are, but we plan to do that. But we would just want to know what your thoughts are going into our conversation. 
Okay, we've got lots of you that have responded. So we can share the results, please. Oh, thank you for that. So 93% of you said that yes, a monthly bus pass is likely a qualified disability expense. And remember the definition that Ann provided us. If it helps to uh, maintain or improve your health, your independence, or your quality of life, um, then it is a qualified disability expense. Um, and so in this case, bus transportation can get you to and from the things that you enjoy to do in life. It can help you with your independence. So again, yes, very likely so, a qualified disability expense. One of the things that we encounter um, with um, qualified disability expenses are folks really want to get into the weeds. Hey, this is not a specific enough definition for me. It leaves open too many possibilities. But we have to remember um, that when the law was created, um, it was done um, with a, a, a very broad definition on purpose. These accounts are meant to be very usable. It's not meant to trip you up. Now, there are a few circumstances where the rules change a little bit, and we can talk about those. But the thing that I want you to walk away from this with is when you ask yourself, will this help to maintain or improve the ABLE accounts, owners, health, independence, or quality of life? If the answer is yes, then most likely it is a qualified disability expense. Can we go to the next slide, please? Here's another question. Could a vacation to Disney World be considered a qualified disability expense? And we'll put the survey up so you can answer that. Likely yes, likely no, or you're not sure. I love the feedback you're giving us and how quickly you're coming with your answers. So thank you for that. And let's share the results. I think we're pretty defined. Okay, so it says about 58% of you think that a, a vacation at Disney World is likely, yes, a qualified disability expense. Another 20% said, no, I, I don't think it would be. And then another 23% said, I'm not sure. Um, and the one thing that I want to say, one of the most common questions that we receive when we present Cal Abel um, out in the community is, would a vacation be considered a qualified disability expense? And, and so um, it goes back to that question. Could that vacation help you to maintain or improve your health, your independence, or your quality of life? Now, in my experience, I've never been on a vacation that didn't improve my quality of life. So in this circumstance, yes, a disability could would very likely, um, a, a Disney World vacation would very likely be considered a qualified disability expense. And there are other reasons um, why that could be included. It could be an educational trip. It could be um, uh, uniting with family. Those are things that enhance individuals' quality of life. Or it could be, um, you know, making independent plans on your own to be able to go on these trips. So there are lots of reasons why um, I believe that this is likely a qualified disability expense. And notice that I'm saying that it's likely an expense um, because um, in my experience with uh, running Cal Abel, um, I'm not aware of anyone who's ever had a claimed qualified disability expense denied. Um, and the only folks that are able to, to deny an expense, it would be the IRS if they ever audited the ABLE account owner or if you're receiving social security benefits and they ask you, what are you using that account for? Um, they may make a determination that something is likely not a qualified expense, but they have a manual system that they would use to make that determination. So again, it won't become, it won't be a surprise to you. It'll be something that they've, um, that is listed in their palms if they're, if they're telling you it's not an expense. 
Let's go to the next slide, please. How about lunch with friends? Would that be considered a qualified disability expense? Likely yes, likely no, or you're not sure. Okay, more than 200 you have, you have responded. Let's share the results. And so yes, 75% of you say likely yes. Lunch with friends is a qualified expense. Another 18% said likely no. Um, others say not sure. Um, um, food or basic living expenses is something that is um, explicitly stated in the Social Security's program operation, operation manual system. So yes, lunch, even if it were lunch with friends, is likely considered a qualified disability expense. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, how about the down payment for a car in the name of the account owner's parents? Would that likely be considered a qualified disability expense? So again, the account owner is the person with the disability. Um, what if their parents purchased a car um, that they would keep in their own name? Would that be considered a qualified disability expense? Likely yes, likely no, not sure. Uh, so in this case, you're a little more torn. Uh, more than half of you say that it's likely not a qualified disability expense. Um, and um, the other half is saying it, either we're not sure or likely yes, it is. Um, and again, um, the, the question at hand is, does it help to improve the individual with the ABLE account? Does it help to um, maintain or improve their health, their independence, and their quality of life? Um, and the answer is, uh, is, or could be, that a car, a new car for parents, um, um, could, be, could be a qualified disability expense. And I'll give an example. Uh, one of our ambassadors um, talked about how they had fought for a new wheelchair with their insurance company for a long time, and they finally got it approved um, for their child. Uh, and when they got the new chair, they realized that the chair didn't fit into the parent's um, older car. They had to go out and get a bigger car. And so they used money um, from their child's Kyle Abel account to purchase that car because it would help that um, child in their transportation needs to get to health care, et cetera. Um, so think about this very differently than you think about insurance. It doesn't necessarily need to be for the sole benefit of the individual with the disability. It doesn't need to be in the name of the individual with the disability in order to qualify as a qualified disability expense, um, it merely needs to meet that criteria. Does it help to maintain or improve an individual's health, independence, or quality of life? So in this case too, I would say likely yes, that a qualified disability expense would be the purchase of a car in the name of, of the parent. But keep in mind that, that the, the person, the ABLE account owner, um, would need to be transported and use that vehicle um, on a regular basis. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So I've been talking about this throughout the process of what is a qualified disability expense. This definition comes directly from um, the federal law and from the Social Security. It says any expense related to the ABLE account owner as a result of living a life with a disability that helps to maintain or improve health, independence, or quality of life is a qualified disability expense. Again, a very broad definition, but it's broad for a reason. These accounts are meant to be very usable, but it can include things like employment or education, housing, transportation, healthcare expenses, and much, much more. Next slide, please. 
here are some examples of qualified disability expenses. Again, there's education, transportation, employment training and support, um, assistive technology, health prevention and wellness, funeral and burial expenses, legal fees, even expenses for um, uh, if you employed somebody to help oversee or monitor your ABLE account. Those are things that are all qualified expenses, financial management and administrative services, and much, much more. This is not in any way meant to be the exhaustive list, but it's just to give you the um, the idea of the broad range of things that you can use your ABLE account for. Let's go to the next slide. So we thought it might be very helpful to go through some real life examples um, of qualified expenses. And these come directly from um, Social Security's Program Opera Operations Manual or the POMS, and it's available on their website. And this is, um, this is in line with, um, would it be considered a qualified expense if you're receiving SSI benefits. So they gave us an example of, of something where if you changed your mind on what you're using um, the expense for, um, that would turn it from a qualified expense into a non-qualified expense. So in this circumstance, in June, Jennifer takes a $7,000 distribution from her ABLE account to pay an educational expense. That educational expense is a qualified disability expense, um, but she doesn't pay it until September. But in August, Jennifer decides to um, take a job offer that she's received, and so she's not going to go back to school. So she didn't make the payment um, for that educational expense. Instead, she took a job offer. Now, in that case where she changed the intent of the distribution uh, from the ABLE account, the $7,000 becomes a countable resource in September because she no longer intends to use it for, for an educational expense. That is a qualified disability expense. Now, unless Jennifer redesignates it for another qualified disability expense or she redeposits the money back into her um, ABLE account um, before September, um, then that money would count against her um, benefits as uh, an additional resource. She'd be exceeding that $2,000 resource limit um, of SSI if that's what she's receiving. Now notice, I said that you could put the money back in your ABLE account, and as long as you did that before um, SSI counted it as a resource, um, then you wouldn't have any problems. The thing that you should consider, though, especially because $7,000 is a lot of money, if, if she had been close to or already exceeded her annual contribution limit for the year, she may not be able to put that entire $7,000 back into her account. Remember, um, most folks can only put in $17,000 into their ABLE account each calendar year. And so if she had already um, got close to or, or got all the way up to that $17,000 limit, even if she took the money out and put that same money back into her account, it would count again as another contribution. Uh, and so she would not be able to put the entire amount in or exceed um, exceed that limit. So, next slide. Housing is one of those areas that may be a little confusing for folks because for housing expenses, um, there are um, there's another rule that says that the money needs to be spent within the same calendar month that it's withdrawn from the ABLE account. And so under normal circumstances, um, even if you're receiving subsidized housing through um, HUD, um, your ABLE account won't be affected 
any money in your ABLE account won't count against determining your family income. Um, no third party contributions would count against determining your, your um, subsidized housing amount. Um, the entire value of the ABLE account would be excluded from your household assets and any distributions you take from your ABLE account won't be counted um, against your housing benefit. Um, if you're earning money though, um, earned income will continue to be earned income and that will affect um, your housing benefit. So you need to be um, aware of that. Um, but if you go to the next slide, um, the social security made it specific that if when you're using your ABLE account to pay for housing expenses, um, they need to occur within the same calendar month. And so they define housing expenses um, to include mortgage payments, including property insurance required by the mortgage holder, um, real property taxes, rent, heating fuel, gas, electricity, water, sewer, garbage removal. Um, there was even a question in the Q&A, um, would homeowners association fees um, be considered a qualified disability expense? The answer is yes, it does. And um, I believe that they would be considered here um, in housing expenses as well. And so the only difference between a, any other qualified disability expense and a um, qualify housing disability expense is again, you need to withdraw that money and make the payment within the same calendar month. Now, um, you may think that things like food, um, which is a qualified disability expense, um, might be considered a housing expense. It's not, it's a basic living expense, it's not a housing expense. And so the withdrawal of the money and the payment for that are not limited by that same calendar month category, like your um, mortgage, utility, rent um, um, payments um, all would be considered. So this is the one area I think that gets a little more confusing for folks, but keeping in mind, as long as you're using it for housing expenses, you need to withdraw the money from your ABLE account and make the payment in the same calendar month. So that means if we're gonna pay our November rent payment, we should wait until after November 31st or, or October 31st, and we should make our payment um, before November 30th in order to make sure that it is um, a qualified disability expense, won't have any impact on our benefits. Uh, next slide, please. So here's an example, again, from the Palms. Amy takes a distribution of $500 from her ABLE account in May to pay for a housing expense for June. She deposits the $500 into her checking account in May, withdraws $500 cash on June 3rd, and pays her landlord. Now, in this case, she didn't make the withdrawal and the payment within the same calendar month. So this distribution is a housing expense um, and part of her checking account balance on June 1st, which makes it a countable resource for the month of June. So that means that it could be counted against her, especially if she has other resources or assets that that $500 would make her go above the $2,000 limit for SSI. So that could interfere with her benefits as long as she's not making the withdrawal and the payment within the same calendar month. If she had made that um, withdrawal on June 1st and she made her rent payment on June 10th, it wouldn't affect her benefits at all. So um, keep that in mind for housing expenses, it has to occur within the same calendar month. Next slide, please. So what is a non-qualified disability expense? Um, 
any expense related to the ABLE account owner as a result of living a life with a disability that, that does not help or maintain health independence uh, or quality of life. Um, and so if you're like me, there are very few things that you can imagine that wouldn't in some way, shape or form um, help you maintain or impact uh, or improve your health, your independence or quality of life. So there are very few things that would be considered non-qualified expenses. But here are some of examples um, that I can help you with that may not be considered qualified disability expenses or non-qualified disability expenses. Um, the purchase of anything illegal. Um, there are lots of things that you can buy that aren't exactly legal for you to purchase. Those would be non-qualified expenses. Um, spending your money um, um, for, to make purchases like um, alcohol or gambling, those things are likely not considered um, qualified expenses. And I know that you may argue the case that, well, if I gamble and I win money, um, that would enhance my quality of life. Um, and um, because this law is created by the IRS, I would say the IRS may argue that with you that um, this is not a qualified disability expense. Um, the same thing for gifts for other people. And again, you may say, well, when I give gifts to other people, um, it makes me feel better. It enhances my quality of life. But again, um, because the ABLE account is meant to, um, uh, the purchases are meant to benefit the individual with the disability directly, gifts for others are likely not a qualified disability expense. So hopefully that helps you. There probably aren't many more examples that we could provide you. And again, I can say that in the six years that I've been working in the ABLE space, there are very few things that have um, um, that I'm aware of that have been considered non-qualified disability expenses. Now let's go to the next slide. So what if I am unsure whether a specific expense is a qualified disability expense? Um, so you need to understand that CalLabel doesn't make the decision on whether or not something is a qualified disability expense. So when you, when you withdraw the money um, from your CalLabel account, we're not asking you, well, what are you using this money for? Um, and really the determination is up to you. The only time that you may be asked whether or not you, um, your withdrawal was for a qualified disability expense, again, is if the IRS does an audit on the, the CalABLE account owner, the person with the disability, or if you're receiving social security benefits and you're doing a recertification or redetermination of benefits. They may see that you have a CalABLE account uh, and they want to know what are you using that money for. Uh, and so we do recommend that you keep good records. Um, but if you're unsure whether a specific expense is a qualified disability expense or not, um, go back to that question. Does this help to the uh, account owner to um, maintain or improve their health their independence or their quality of life. That is the key condition. Um, there are some um, best practices if you're, um, um, again, to be able to, if you're ever asked about whether or not you're using your CalABLE account for qualified expenses, um, there's some record keeping that we recommend that you do whenever you make withdrawals um, from your CalABLE account. The first thing is to keep receipts. Um, when you make a purchase for an item that's a qualified disability expense, keep a receipt, keep it in a secure and safe area. Um, with our new program administrator, VESWA, you can actually upload um, photos of your receipts to your CalABLE account 
um, so you can keep them in the very same place that your Calable accounts exist. You should also record some notes on whatever the purchased um, um, item was. You can include the, um, the amount of the item and how the, the item impacts the Calable account's owner's health, independence, or quality of life. Now, the IRS recommends that you keep your records for three years um, from the date of a filed tax return um, or two years from the date of your paid taxes. So you don't need to keep these things forever, but keeping them for a few years um, is a very good um, rule to live by. Um, you should keep your receipts organized so you can easily find them when you need them. Um, you can even scan um, and store them on a computer, or like I said, you can upload them um, directly to your Calable account. Um, but that's really all that you need to do. Um, there's no extensive, you don't have to write a justification. It's one or two notes, uh, again, along with um, the amount of the withdrawal and the amount of the purchase that you made. You can always keep in mind, too, that any leftovers, say you withdrew um, $500 to make a purchase and the amount uh, that you spent was only $450, you can either redeposit that $50 back into your ABLE account, or you can find another $50 ex uh, qualified disability expense to, to spend that remaining money on. So you're never stuck in a place that you've um, pulled money out and you didn't use it for the qualified expense. You can always make another choice on how you're gonna use that money. Um, hopefully this has been very helpful. I know that we have lots and lots of questions um, and let's go to the next slide. Um, another great um, way to track your expenses is using the CalAble prepaid card. Um, you can load money directly from your CalAble account um, onto the prepaid card. And the prepaid card statement is a great way to track what you've spent that money on. You know that the money that you've put on that card only comes, is only able to come from your CalAble account. Um, so you, you'll have a good record of everything that you've used the money for. You can make some determinations of where the card can't and it can and cannot be used. You can have a separate card for the authorized legal representative and for the beneficiary. Um, and there are no additional fees um, to have the um, Cal Able prepaid card. So this is a very useful tool in helping you to monitor um, your qualified disability expenses. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ann Osborne and she's going to um, talk with some of our um, ambassadors about their qualified disability expenses. Thank you, Dante. I know Dominica, um, I'm, she's, Dominica, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I know you are short on time, so I want to just give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the group and also kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and how you've used your Calable account. Sure. Um, my name is Dominika Bednarska. Um, I um, tell you about myself. Um, I'm in my 40s. I have cerebral palsy. Um, I grew up on SSI and SSDI and kind of um, within those systems. Um, I don't receive those benefits now. I work full time. Um, I uh, work for the federal government doing a civil rights type work. And um, I use my Cal Able account to help me purchase my first home. Um, and I've used it to help buy some things for that home, like an adjustable bed frame and a, a mattress and, and things like that when I was uh, getting set up. 
So um, I used it for those kinds of things. It was a really easy process. I think people get especially nervous about what are qualified um, you know, expenses because I think there's a lot of um, sort of interface with different bureaucracies that deal with disability that have very stringent rules. There's very stringent re record keeping. And it wasn't really like that um, with the Cal Evil account. I called them up and I was like, so this is what I'm doing. What do I need to do about it? And they were like, just keep your records for your taxes. And that was pretty much it. So it was a very easy process. Um, the money came out of my account very quickly. There weren't really any hiccups. That's, and I just think it's a really great tool to use, um, you know, as a person with a disability trying to like get established. That's great. And, you know, we've had a lot of questions in the, in the question answer box. And one of the questions that we received was, you know, what is the benefit of having a Calable account, especially since you um, are full-time employed and you're not on benefits um, and they've can you just speak a little bit why you feel this is so important to you? Uh, oh, as yeah, Kelly sure. I encourage, I encourage every disabled person I know who's eligible to open a Calable account, even if they're working full time and they're an adult, just because, um, you know, you can it can grow without taxes and you can take money out without taxes. The money I took out uh, towards my home purchase was actually just the interest that had accumulated on my account at that time. So that was money that I wouldn't have otherwise had if I hadn't had the CalAble account. Um, I mean, it's it's the same sort of, um, just like you would open any other savings account and save for the future, except that you don't have to pay taxes on your withdrawals. And I think someone put in the chat that like the limit under SSI is 100,000 and then for everybody else, it's just 17,000, but it's 17,000 per year for everyone. And then the max on social security benefits, I think is, 100k but if you're not on social security benefits i think it's more like 500 it's like over five hundred thousand dollars that you can contribute to um, an able account before you max it out so i probably won't get there because i probably won't live long enough to see that kind of account balance but um but yeah it's been very helpful to have that i think it's really worth it whether you work or whether you don't work and um it's just, it's a good thing to have. I think it's really important for people with disabilities to take more control over their financial futures because like those bureaucracies are so discouraged from us, you know, saving and planning for our future and like amassing those kind of resources. So I think it's important to take the opportunities when we can. And I think a Cali will account is a great opportunity for that. Thank you, Dominica, for your time. I know you've got to get back to work and I really appreciate you being with us. So I am going to move on to our next ambassador is Patty. So Patty, thank you so much for being with us. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, why you opened the Calable account and how you're using it? Hi, I'm Patty Wong. I have a son, he is autistic. When I first started opening the account, my thought was to use the funds in CalAble account to support his educational needs like computer. And I remember the very first time when I just opened the account, he needed a laptop right away. And it was a really good way for me to get the money out of the CalAble account and just buy the laptop. The reason is because at that time, even though he's under, he's a client of Department of Rehabilitation, but the laptop that he wanted is a little bit expensive. And so Department of Rehabilitation did not believe it's their responsibility to buy that more expensive laptop. So because of my how able account opened up for my son, I was able to use the money and just support his needs. But as he grows and he has different needs. So right now with the Cal able account, my uh, support for him is helping him out to save money for his housing needs. He also talks about wanting to have his own car driving himself because nowadays when he goes to play 
table tennis with his friends. He sees his friends can always drive on their own. So they don't need to call Uber or they don't need to call their parents to pick them up. So that is one of his goals. So as a result, right now, the funds in the Cal Able account is doing for his housing needs as well as his transportation needs. Yes, and we saw that even in our poll when we asked people, you know, what they were using their money for that, you know, housing was one of those top items. Um, Patty, just real quick, I know we don't have a lot of time, but you want to just let people know uh, how is it easy for you to use your Calable account to access your funds? And I mean, I know that we always get asked that question. And so just if you want to share just briefly um, you know, your experience, that would be great. For me, I the thing that Calable account is very easy. It's just like any other online banking. So the way that my son usually transfers money in and out of Cal Able account is linked to his checking account. So if I know that he needs money ahead of time, I just transfer it electronically from his Cal Able account to his bank account. Or when he has issued money to deposit into the Cal Able account, then I can just do it electronically to get money from his bank account to his Count Able account. Another good way is if you have relatives or friends and family that are more than happy to help out, you can ask them and send them the link and they can directly contribute to your, um, your son or like your family's needs with a Count Able account. So I think it's really convenient and easy from my experience. I have not had any issues and concerns at all. Well, thank you, Patty, so much for um, that, that testimony. I think, you know, really kind of puts it, puts the account ease to our customers. I'm going to let you uh, stand by. We might have some questions for you, but we're going to bring on Jennifer our last ambassador. Jennifer, are you there? Uh, I'm here. All right. Jennifer has been with us uh, quite a few times. So if this is, you, you may recognize her voice, but Jennifer is one of our ambassadors who uses her account quite frequently. So Jennifer, you want to just tell us briefly a little bit about yourself and how you're using your account. Uh, I Hi, my name is Jennifer. Um, what about me? Let's see. I like fedoras and I like traveling. <laughs> Those are the two most important things. Um, I came to Calabal. It was brought up to me by an attorney after I was a victim of a, we'll say a really bad experience. Um, a settlement was paid. I didn't know where to put the funds. I knew I didn't want to use them all up and not have any. And the attorney that works with finances said, well, hey, how about Cal Abel? I remembered years ago, I had actually printed out an article with the discussion of Abel and changes to be made and try to see if they can be accessible nationwide. So Right away, I said, that's perfect. I've been waiting to see the outcome of this. I jumped right in. I created my account. I put the max at that at that time, the max was 15,000. Yeah, I filled it up. Uh, and that has, it helped me with the furniture I have now, assistive devices that the insurance still isn't paying for, traveling to see friends and and all, all over the country. It's a wonderful thing to not have to worry about, oh, I can't use this here, or can I use this here, or can I do that? The Calable makes it very simple. There's pretty much, just as Dante said, essentially 98, 99% of everything that you do, so long as it's not gambling or other things like that, anything that improves your quality of life. 
It's absolutely wonderful. It works for some. It may not work for others. If you're interested or if you think it could actually help you, I say jump right in. That's that's one of the better choices you could make in order to protect yourself, but then also have a nest egg. Thank you, Jennifer. I know that you are a strong supporter of CalABLE, and we always appreciate whenever you can join us to share your story. Um, I know we've had tons of questions in the Q&A, uh, but before I do that, uh, Maria, can we go back to the presentation just to uh, share some information? Okay, so as you see here, this is our contact information. Um, our call center has expanded their hours. We're open from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's still the same number, 833-CALABLE or 833-225-2253. Next slide. Uh, this is our resources. We have all our information uh, online. We have a strong media, strong media presence. Uh, we are on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We also have brochures available on the calable.ca.gov website if you like to print any brochures. And we also have our partner toolkit that we can share with you. Next slide. Uh, this is our up our next webinar, which will be next month, and this is going to be talking about rollovers and e-gifting. I know Patty had mentioned e-gifting for family and friends, so this will be on November 15th uh, next month. Next slide. And this uh, uh, is our disclosure statement that we uh, want to share with you. As you know, we are a savings and investment uh, program, and there are risks to uh, whatever investments that you do uh, select. So we do like to share this with you. Next slide. Just want to offer my thanks um, to all of you for participating today. I know, um, especially when we're talking about um, financial matters, especially as they relate to benefits, we want to make sure that we get these things right. And so I understand your hesitation or your anxiety when it comes to trying to figure out if things are qualified disability expenses or not. Hopefully some of what we've talked to today have, has provided you with some relief. Um, and if not, let's continue the conversation. Please reach out to us. I wanna thank everybody who helped us put on today's presentation, um, including the CalABL team, the Vestwell team, uh, our interpreters, um, um, everyone um, who's participated. And we've had um, many people behind the scenes, many more than you can imagine um, that were answering questions and moving us along. So thank you so much. Um, the captioners as well. Uh, and thank you, Treasurer Ma, for joining us live uh, today. Um, really appreciate the support that she does in helping us to spread, continue to spread the word and, and good information about CalABLE. We look forward to talking to you in the very near future. Again, if there's something that we didn't get to and we try as hard as we can in the time that we have to get to as many as we can, please do feel free to reach out to us directly and we'll work with you to, to get you the answers that you need. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.